Hey guys, so we're going strong with the final season of Street Fighter V right now with Dun Hibiki already released, Rose almost here or maybe even out depending on when you're watching this, and Oro also not too far away. We even had the opportunity to take a sneak peek into Akira Kazama's gameplay, so everything is pretty much in the open now. Well, almost everything. Street Fighter V still has one big secret up its sleeve, and that's the identity of the mysterious 5th DLC character, who I suspect we'll learn during Capcom Summer Update in a few months. Until then, the only thing we can do is speculate, and that's exactly what this video is about. I'll be giving my thoughts on who's going to be the final character and the reasons behind my opinions. I think it's important to remember that this season is probably a last minute decision due to the development of Street Fighter VI being pushed a little further into the future. We could talk about why that's the case, but it doesn't really matter as long as we understand that the original plan was to end with Champion Edition, a nice, full package containing all characters and most stages and costumes, with the final DLC fighters being the last remaining bosses, who were missing from the arcade mode. Gyu and Seth weren't just any characters chosen by their popularity, they actually meant something to complete the roster. As far as final DLC characters go, I honestly can't think of a better choice. However, now that we do have another season, the roster was further expanded with characters chosen based on their popularity or how well the developers thought they could implement unique movesets into the game. We even got a special treat in the form of Akira, the first rival school's character to officially make the transition, if you disregard things like cameos and crossover appearances. I think it's nice to notice how Akira is sort of a combo breaker here, since the first three characters, Dan, Rose and Oro, are all returning fighters and then we have a character from a different franchise filling the next spot. I doubt that for the final choice they would just go back to simply another veteran from a previous title, regardless of how popular they are, unless they meant something. Now, I think this would be a major step down from how perfectly Gil and Seth were supposed to finish the game's roster. I might be wrong about this, but I have this theory that the 5th DLC character will have to be someone that has a special meaning, and not just a character that could be switched with someone else. If I'm right, this excludes characters like Crimson Viper, Dudley, Abel, or, well, pretty much anyone that has appeared in Ultra Street Fighter 4, with perhaps one exception as well as anyone missing from the Street Fighter Alpha or Street Fighter 3 series. So who's left then? Well, here are some options that I believe might have a chance. Number 10, a Street Fighter EX character. Arika might have their own fighting game, Fighting Layer, but they're mostly known for having developed the Street Fighter 3D games, aka the EX series, adding to the group of World Warriors a few original characters. In fact, when Narika announced fighting EX Layer, which brings back many fan favorites from the EX series, I was pretty sure they would also add someone from their previous titles and even made a video about it, but to my surprise and disappointment, that was not the case, and to this day, fighting EX Layer features exclusively characters created for Street Fighter EX. You know, besides a guest fighter. Given the extreme popularity of these characters, it wouldn't be strange to see one of them joining Street Fighter V, especially given the fact that both companies seem to be in good terms and we even have many alternate costumes released this year, dressing Street Fighters as Arika characters. That, however, is also the biggest issue with this DLC possibility. It's unlikely that anyone that has appeared as a costume would also show up as a playable fighter, and that excludes a few very popular names like Hokuto, Blair Dame, Garuda, Kairi and Skulomania. Doctrine Dark, whose costume was given to Gaio in SF4 and heavily inspires one of Nash's costume in SF5, also doesn't look like a promising choice. That doesn't leave us with too many possibilities, I'm afraid. I would love to see Pulon Purna or Daron Mister being added, but they seem a little too random and not important for such a prestigious spot. That's why if they do go with an EX character, the only possible choice I see is Cracker Jack, but I also wouldn't be surprised if he shows up as a costume for Balrog instead. Number 9. Cyborg Cyborg is the sole playable character in a Japanese game called Street Fighter 2 Movie, which is based on the animated film. 
Though unreleased in America, the game was shown at the 1995 E3 under the title Street Fighter II The Interactive Movie, which is a good description of the gameplay, since most of it consists of watching clips from the actual movie and analyzing them using the search command. Doing well in those segments will enhance the cyborg's powers to aid him in the final and only fight of the game, where with Ken's moveset he faces Ryu in a one-on-one -on -one battle using the gameplay system from Super Street Fighter II Turbo. Cyborg himself is not that interesting of a character and his game of origin is a bizarre entry in the franchise that most players are probably not even aware exists, but there's just something special about bringing back someone who has long been forgotten. Maybe it's just me, but I see this as a character worthy of taking the last spot, after he goes through a redesign, obviously. Number 8. Oni. Ah, so we reached the one exception from Ultra Street Fighter 4 that I believe might have a chance of joining Street Fighter 5. And the reason for it is quite simple. Shoto characters are super popular, and if there's some sort of demonic looking fighter, all the better. But of course, popularity alone wouldn't be enough to take the spot, considering my theory. So what does the trick is on his story as the form Akuma takes when he has become one with the Satsui no Hado entirely, completely losing any shred of humanity he had remaining. Admittedly, this isn't as good as having Gil and Seth close the roster, but Oni is still sort of a secret boss character that you might consider to be missing in arcade mode, so he does fill this imaginary criteria of mine. On the bright side, even if he's never added, we can still play him on PC since a mod was released that adds a very complete version of the character. Number 7. Another Rival Schools character. Longtime friends of the channel will know that I have been asking for a Rival Schools character to join Street Fighter for many years now, including having Akira herself at the top of a top 10 list. So needless to say, I'm very happy that this is finally about to become a reality and I don't really need anyone else for now. But you know, if we can be a little greedy and go ahead and ask for the whole arm after having been given a hand, why not just add a second Rival Schools representative in the roster? I have listed my preferences before and my comment section seems to be quite favorable to either Batsu or Tiffany, so it's safe to say that there's no shortage of cool characters to choose from and every one of them would be a great addition to the game. I can't really see that happening though. For one thing, it sort of diminishes a little Akira's impact and it seems strange to keep it a secret after having reviewed her before. So while I don't think this will be the case, it certainly fills my criteria and could be an excellent option if Capcom decides to prove me wrong. Number 6. Violent Ken Another rare exception to my theory of no returning fighters, Violent Ken is a character that was pretty much responsible for selling Ultra Street Fighter 2 to a lot of people. As we discussed many times before, Shoto's are popular, evil versions of main characters are popular, and as anyone that plays Street Fighter Online knows, Ken is also super popular, so a fighter that has all three characteristics is obviously going to please many fans. Sure, some people like me might not really care at all about this character, but it's hard to deny the impact that his announcement would have with the community, so I think it would be a smart way to complete the roster. I just hope I'm wrong about this one. Number 5. A Guest Fighter Another interesting way to fill this spot with a character that feels more special than just a regular returning fighter is to have someone from a different franchise join the roster. The possibilities here are endless, anyone from Fear of Fury's Terry Bogard or King of Fighters' Yori Yagami would be quite epic. The problem is that while other franchises like Mortal Kombat and Tekken are now very familiar with the concept, Street Fighter doesn't really have a history of adding guest fighters into its roster. Yes, there has been crossovers with other franchises, like X-Men vs Street Fighter or Street Fighter Cross Tekken, but in terms of main entries in the series, there really hasn't been anything like that. However, there is always the possibility of bringing someone from another Capcom franchise, and that feels like a much more reasonable option. Darkstalkers is always a possibility, even if some of their most famous characters have already appeared as DLC costumes, but there's also the super popular Resident Evil franchise. Do I think this is going to happen? Unlikely. Is it possible? Maybe. Number 4. A Street Fighter the Movie Character Yes, I know, this is a bizarre alternative, but I have reason to believe, or at least hope, it's not a completely random option. 
for those unaware, Street Fighter the movie is a fighting game based on the so bad that it's good 1994 live action Street Fighter movie featuring Jean-Claude Van Damme as Guile. The arcade version was developed by Incredible Technologies and brings a lot of new concepts and gameplay ideas which, to be fair, look silly and don't always work well. There's also a home console port for Sega Saturn and Sony PlayStation, which was developed by Capcom and changed to be much closer to Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. In both versions, but especially in the arcade, a few new characters were added to the roster. While I do enjoy Blade and the other Shadaloo soldiers, it's Captain Sawada that I see as the one that might have any kind of chance of making the transition. Not only is it pretty easy to come up with a story for him, given his connection to Gaio and Nash, but as sort of a mix between Gaio and Fei Long, Sawada also has a couple of interesting moves, and a few ridiculous ones, but we don't need to talk about those. To give it a little more credit, Capcom's latest April Fool's game, Neko Drop 2, which, by the way, is very fun, has a bunch of different cats based on the characters from Street Fighter V, and also, get this, one based on Sawada himself. It might not be an insurmountable amount of evidence, but it at least shows that Capcom is aware of the character, and you have to agree that seeing him in Neko Drop 2 as the only non-SF5 character is at least oddly enough to make you wonder. Number 3. A new character Perhaps the key to make a character special enough to become the last one to appear in Street Fighter V is to go the same route they went with Ultra Street Fighter 4 and bring someone completely new to the franchise, or at least playable for the first time. If Capcom does decide to go this route, I hope they go the extra mile and create someone completely new instead of bringing a fighter from the arcade mode. It would also be cool if he or she could represent a brand new country and fighting style, which I at least think is always fun to see. But you know, as long as they don't go full DiCaprio and simply bring another doll, which, to be fair, I doubt they will, given how much work they seem to have been putting so far, I'll be happy enough. Number 2. A Street Fighter 1 character While bringing someone from a more modern title with super moves and all that sort of thing wouldn't be special enough, according to my theory, resurrecting a character from the very first game that was never playable before definitely fits the bill. The small roster doesn't offer a lot of options though, with some characters like Joe, Mike and Geki having been mostly replaced by other popular fighters. That pretty much leaves us with Retsu and Lee as the two most likely to fill the spot. While there have been characters with similar movesets that were later introduced to the franchise like Makoto or the twins Yun and Yang, Retsu and Lee still have sort of a unique appearance that might be enough to justify a resurrection. One of them, Retsu, was even thought to possibly be Ultra Street Fighter IV's final DLC character, to the point of being teased in Capcom's official DiCapri reveal trailer. A more dubious option would be Ego, who was brought back for Capcom vs SNK2 and then later added to the PSP version of Alpha 3, which not a lot of people had a chance to play. So in a way, Ego is still missing a proper return, but he has been modernized and made playable in two titles, so perhaps he has a little too much exposure to fit here. Number 1. A Slam Masters character Whenever you see people talking about how the rival schools game share the same universe as Street Fighter, someone will quickly join the conversation to point out that the same applies to this classic wrestling franchise. The biggest connection between them is in the form of Mike Hager, ex-mayor of Metro City, seen here during his wrestling days before he took up office. Hager himself is a strong candidate to the last TLC spot. Of all original protagonists, he remains as the only one not to be featured in Street Fighter, something that even Maki and Lucia were able to achieve, except as an alternate costume for Zangief in SF4 and Cody in SF5. I don't think he would actually make the cut though, since he does show up in Marvel vs Capcom, something that no other Final Fight character has achieved, and his moveset is just a little too similar to Zangief. Besides, and I think this is probably the most important factor, as a connection to Slam Masters, Hagar is a pretty poor choice. A better pick would be one of its original characters, but I don't really have too much experience with the franchise and I'm not familiar with who the most popular characters are, so I'll leave it to the comment section below to answer that question. And that's about it for my list, my friends. Who do you think is going to join the roster? Leave your opinions below, please remember to like and share this video if you want to see more stuff like this in the future, 
And let's all come back here when the fifth character is announced to see how wrong I was about all of this. For now, this has been a Dukimi Player, and I'll see you guys later.